Hey, what is going on guys, and welcome back to yet another Iceborne video that has taken more than 30 hours to make. Now you're probably gonna ask, why? Why would he do this? Well, absolutely no reason whatsoever besides my love and passion for this game and its community. Anyway, today I'm bringing you the best builds for fighting and farming Alatrion for every single weapon in the game. Now, unlike my last counter builds video, which was a tragedy, we now actually know how to fight him, and we know that you need a nice balance between brawl and elemental damage. So I will be showing you guys the builds as well as give you recommendations for which one of the two event quests you should bother fighting him in. Now, this video is a long one. There's a lot to talk about since there are 14 different weapons in this game that's a lot so for your convenience i will be leaving timestamps in the video description in case you want to check out a weapon in particular and by that i mean that i definitely won't forget to post a timestamp so you guys have to skim through or watch the entire video for ad revenue i would never never do something no, no, no. i would never do something that's gonna be i swear i swear so without further ado let's get started as always Let's start off with Greatsword. We're going to be using the Safi Greatsword. I have it augmented for one affinity, one health region, and one element up. And the awakens that you need are a Velkana Essence, two element fives, one attack five, and one attack six. If you aren't able to hit the elemental DPS checks in time, then just swap your awakens for more element. But all you need to survive his Nova is one elemental topple. And if your attacks are landing fairly consistently, then this should be no problem. Now because it's Safi, you can pretty much use the exact same set for both fire and ice quests. Just use a corresponding element on the sword. But I recommend to try and fight him with the fire Safi sword in the ice active quest, because Greatsword has really long animations for its moves and its attacks. And while he's in ice form, he has a bunch of long openings that you can use to attack him and tenderize his head. Anyway, back to the set. For this, we're going to be using a combination of Velcana and Brachidios armor to get Agitator Secret and Frostcraft. With this, you have Frostcraft Critical Element, which is really nice, Agitator 7, Attack Boost 4, Divine Blessing 3, which is really, really nice, Weakness Exploit 3, Focus 3, Crit Boost 3, Health Boost 3, 2 levels of Coalescence, Quick Sheath and Crit Eye, and a spare level of Flinch Free. I want to make a note that this set does have 2 levels of Coalescence, but it unfortunately has no Blight Resist, so keep some Null Berries in your Radial Menu at all times. I also went for Weakness exploit over crit draw because we want to go for those juicy slinger cancel TCSs and we want those to crit above anything else. Moving on we have a long sword. For this one I am once again going to recommend that you take on the ice active event quest and the reason why is because again you have really long animations for your moves specifically helm splitter so whenever he's doing the ice breath attack is a perfect opening for you to land those and get some juicy damage. For this we're going to be using the Kiar sword king. I have this augmented for health region and the rest is element. For this, we are going to be using a full set of Safi armor, and as a whole, this would give you max fire attack, agitator, three levels of evade window, which is really nice for those foresight slashes, three levels of crit boost, attack boost, coalescence, health boost, and weakness exploit, and two levels of blight resist. The two levels of blight resist will make blights last a very, very short amount of time, which will proc coalescence while you keep fighting, which is a huge boost to element and raw. Longsword mainly scales off of raw, but it does attack often enough for you to rack up that elemental damage fairly well, so if you feel like you don't need this much element and you could go for some more raw to break the horns easier, then just replace the blaze charm for the attack charm and then slot in a few jewels of fire attack instead. Now if you positively need to do the fire active quest, then just use the Kiar Stream, which has an extra slot, so you can get one extra level of attack boost in there. Next up, we have Sword and Shield. Now, this one might be surprising for a lot of people, but by far, the best set to bring to fight a Latrion with Sword and Shield is a Frostcraft set. And if you don't believe me, then just go watch this insane run. He has an even faster time, but that was with Heroic, so we're not gonna really take a look at that. But I've never seen such beautiful, perfect execution in my life. This guy is insane. Definitely go check him out. He is the inspiration behind this build, and he has opened my third eye about Sword and Shield. Anyway, this is basically the same set that we use for Greatsword, except we don't have to worry about focus. So this uses the Safi Sword and Shield, Awaken for Velkana Essence, one Sharpness 5, two Attack 5s, and one Attack 6. Sword and Shield does a way better job of applying elements, so you don't need to spec for that much element. So that is why we have mainly attack on the weapon, to help with the raw to break the horn. The armor is a mix, again, of Velkana and Brachy for Frostcraft and Agitator Secret. So as a whole, you have have Agitator 7, Max Fire Attack, Wingless Exploit, Crit Boost, Health Boost, 
two levels of Divine Blessing, Quick Sheath, and Attack Boost, and one level of Coalescence. This set does have Coalescence, but it, again, doesn't have Blight Res, so keep some Null Berries ready, though with Sword and Shield it really shouldn't be a problem consuming them at all since you can use items while your weapon is unsheathed. The playstyle for this set is pretty funky, and it does require some practice, a little bit of execution, but it's actually pretty safe since it's a hit-and-run strategy. You basically just want to slice the limbs for elemental damage and use Perfect Rush while your Frostcraft is at max level, for insane damage. Like, it's crazy. I've never seen so much damage come from a Sword and Shield set. Next up, we have Dual Blades. Now for Dual Blades, I highly recommend that you fight him in the Fire Active quest, because the best option for fighting him in Ice Mode is to use the Kiara Rage Dual Blades, which needs Mind's Eye due to it only having blue sharpness, and it's just weaker than Ice overall. So, for the Kiara Ice, which are pretty good weapons, you can use this set. This is a full Safi set, and with it you get Max Ice Attack and Agitator, three levels of Evade Window, which is awesome on Dual Blades, Max Crit Boost, Item Prolonger, Weakness Exploit, and Coalescence, two levels of Blight Resistance, one level of Attack Boost, and Protective Polish. So here we have the classic combo of two Blight Res and three Coalescence, which should increase your damage dramatically. And we also have Protective Polish and Item Prolonger combo, which will make your Perma Sharpness last an extra 30 seconds, which is always nice. Moving on, we have Hammer. For this, I am once again asking you to try and use Hammer versus him in the Fire Active quest due to that Fire Hammer being in the same position as Dual Blades. Fire does not reach White, which means you need Mind's Eye, and it's just weaker all around the board. Now for Ice, we are going to be using the Kiar Hammer Ice, and for the Armor, we're going to be using a combination of Teo and Bracky for Master's Touch and Agitator Secret. Now as a whole, this would give you Agitator 7, Attack Boost 6, Crit Eye 3, Max Crit Boost, Weakness Exploit, and Health Boost, two levels of Blight Resistance, and Coalescence plus heat guard which is nice in this fight I guess. Here you once again have the blight res coal combo and you have master's touch in this set so you don't have to worry about your sharpness at all since the only spot you should realistically be hitting is the head. If you feel like you need a little bit more element to reach the cap or you're struggling to get that elemental topple then just swap out some attack decos for ice attack and make sure you try and proc coalescence as it gives you a decent chunk more elemental damage. And as for gameplay if you are struggling to hit that elemental topple then try to focus on hitting the limbs, the forearms, or you know, the forelegs instead of the head 100% of the time because those do take more elemental damage. Up next we have Hunting Horn. For this we're going to be using a Safi Horn so you can use it for either quest. Obviously just use a corresponding element. The Awakens you need are an Attack Melody and I recommend Attack Melody 4 since it has Blight Resist, Attack Large, Impact Echo Waves, and all Melody effects extended. I also Awakened it for 1 Element 5, 1 Sharpness 5, 1 Attack 6, and 1 Attack 5. The armor is half Safi and a half Elatrion and as a whole you get Attack Boost 5 and Agitator 5. Fire Attack 4, Crit Boost 3, Dragon Rest 3, Defense Boost 3, Coalescence 3, Health Boost 3, Weakness Exploit 3, Blight Resist, Horn Maestro, and Crit Eye 2, and Protective Polish. Now this set has the Elatrion 2 piece set bonus, and it's mainly focused on Raw, so if you feel like you need a little bit more element, but you just don't have any Elatrion pieces yet, use this set instead. It has a little bit less Raw, but a bit more element, and it should work just fine. Now if you're really struggling with hitting the elemental topples, then I recommend that you wait out until you get the Fire Active quest, and you use this Kiar set. This has way less raw, but it almost has three times as much element. But the songs on this are complete ass, unfortunately. Next we have Switch Axe. For this we're going to be using Safi again, so just choose the one with the corresponding element. The Awakens are all attack, and the armor is all Safi. As a whole, this would give you Max Attack Boost and Agitator, Level 3 Evade Window, Crit Boost, Blight Resist, Weakness Exploit, Health Boost, Power Prolonger, Item Prolonger, and one level of Protective Polish. As you can see, this is a pretty raw focus set, but because of how Sword Mode works, you should have no problems hitting the Elemental Damage check, but if you're struggling to do so, then use this set instead. This swaps out two Awakens for Elemental and replaces Attack Boost for Ice Attack, or Fire Attack, you know how it is. This has about 10% less raw, but it has nearly twice as much element, so you should be fine. I personally have used this set and it works pretty well for me so I highly recommend it. Next we have Charge Blade. For this one I am seriously recommending that you try and fight him on the Fire Active Event Quest because that way you can use the Kiar Strongarm Ice which is an insane weapon. And the armor for this set is of course Full Safi. As a whole this would give you Max Ice Attack, Agitator 5, Evade Window 3, Max Crit Boost, Blight Res, Health Boost, Weakness Exploit, and Item Prolonger. One level of Capacity Boost, Guard, Attack Boost, 
and protective polish. If you must fight him in ice active mode, then use the Kiar King, which actually has more raw despite lacking a level in attack boost compared to the other set, but it has less element and it doesn't have a level 1 slot. Kiar Strong Arm Ice is my go-to for fighting Alatreon anyway. Next we have Lance. For Lance, we're going to be using the Kiar Crest Lance. Both the fire and ice version of this weapon are completely identical, so use whichever one is required for the quest. The armor is also full Safi, and as a whole it gives you Agitator 5, Guard 5, Attack Boost 4, Evade Window 3, Crit Boost 3, Wex 3, Offensive Guard 3, and Health Boost 3, 2 levels of Blight Resist, and Protective Polish. Sadly, can't fit Coalescence in this set, as Offensive Guard and Guard 5 are pretty much a necessity. Thankfully, Guard Up isn't, though. But you also only have Blight Res 2, not 3, so you might get Blighted at some point for, unfortunately, no benefit, uh, but it shouldn't last too long. Overall, this is a pretty comfortable set to fight him in, and thanks to how Lance works, you should have no problem hitting the elemental damage topple. Next is obviously Gun Lance. For this, we're going to be using the Kiar Buster Stream, and I suggest you do the same because, same as other Kiar fire weapons, the fire damage variant of this weapon has the exact same stats, but it can't reach white, so you'll need Mind's Eye, and it just does less damage in every regard, so I would not recommend it. Anyway, we need to do elemental damage to Elatrion, so we're not going to be using Shelling at all with Gunlance, since that does not do elemental damage. And we're also not going to be blocking much at all, since Gunlance attacks are very slow compared to Lance, so you won't get as much benefit from Offensive Guard, and you'll probably just have a harder time recovering from blocking in the first place. So evading is the way to go for this fight, and therefore this set. So for the armor, we're going to use three 3-piece Safi and 2-piece Bracky in order to improve both our raw and our elemental. So as a whole, you would have Agitator 7, Ice Attack 6, Attack Boost 4, Max Crit Boost, Blight Res, Weakness Exploit, Health Boost, 2 levels of Evade Extender, and 1 level of Evade Window. Unfortunately, we can't fit in more Evade Window without sacrificing Health Boost, but if you're a Gunlance Goat, then go ahead and replace the combination decos for Evasion instead of Vitality, and the set is guaranteed to feel a lot better, but I personally just would not recommend playing without Health Boost. Boost. That's just like a standard for me, I guess. Like, I, I, I will not use a set that doesn't have 100% crit in a, some way and health boost, uh, unless it doesn't fit the playstyle of that weapon. But most weapons just abide by that rule. So, up next is Insect Glaive. The Kinsect that you're going to want to use with this is the Gleam Beetle 3 Metis. This is a blunt type Kinsect with a blast dust effect. Now, for the element, you're obviously going to want to use the element that matches your Insect Glaive. So, if you're using fire, use fire. If you're going to use ice, then use ice. But this has a level 18 element on it, as well as level 18 power. So it's really, really good for this fight. For this, we're going to be using Safi's Insect Glaive, so you can use it for either quest, just use the corresponding element. But I actually am going to recommend that you try and fight him in the fire active quest. The reason is because when he's in fire mode, he does that sweeping fire breath attack and that firebomb attack where it like erupts on the ground outward and he jumps backwards. You can dodge both of those things with a jump, and you can follow it up with your slam attack and land on his face, which does a crap load of damage attaches your bug to him and keeps you safe so that's just going to be my recommendation anyway you're going to need to awaken it for two sharpness fives to get it to purple one attack five and one attack six pretty standard awakens but you're also going to need the spirit and strength kinsec bonus which is great for this fight for the armor we're going to need master's touch so we're going to use a mix of teostra and raging bracky so as a whole you would have level seven agitator ice attack six crit eye and attack boost four max wax crit boost and health boost and one level of coalescence now you do have a level of coalescence which is amazing on Glaive, but you don't have Blight Res at all, so definitely keep some Nullberries handy. Also, even though this set is mainly raw, Insect Glaive does a great job of dealing elemental damage, which is why I spec for Ice Attack 6 in this case. Use Fire Attack if you're using the Fire Glaive. So you should not have any problems hitting the DPS check and breaking the horn either. Now we have Bow. For Bow, either quest is viable, but they both have their pros and cons. For Ice Active, we're going to be using the Kiar Bow King along with Full Safi Armor. Now keep in mind that bow builds are pretty customizable in terms of what skills you prioritize. Health boost, constitution, stamina surge, agitator, etc. These are just my preferences, okay? Anyway, I have max crit eye, fire attack, level 3 evade window, which is great on bow. Max crit boost, blight res, which is very important. I've, I've, I've said this before, blight res on bow is just perfection. Level 3 health boost, 2 levels of constitution and stam surge, 1 level of spread shot, agitator, and bow charge plus. For fire active, we're going to be using the Kiar Boat Stream with full Safi 2. And for this, we're pretty much going to have the exact same skills, except we'll have ice attack, obviously, and one less level of constitution, unfortunately. 
Now for both of these sets, I went with Critical Eye instead of Weakness Exploit because the arms do not count as a weak spot for ranged weapons. So if you use Weakness Exploit, it would not count, and the arms are what take the most elemental damage. But with this set, you have 100% affinity pretty much anywhere, so you can do a lot of damage to the head and the arms. Now the Fire Bow has more raw, which makes the Horn Break easier, but the Ice Bow has way more elements, so it makes the topples a bit easier. So just keep those things in mind. Like if you're using the fire bow, you'll break the horn a little bit easier, but you need to focus more on the limbs because of that. And then if you're using the ice bow, then you need to focus more on the head because it's going to take more shots to break the horn. So yeah, just keep those things in mind. Next, we have light bow gun. Now, fair warning, this is a raw only set, meaning you are expected to die to the Nova. But as long as you only die to the Nova and not randomly die at other times, you should be fine. This has fortify, so you can actually die one other time randomly okay that's like your one mistake forgiven card you just can't do it twice <laughs> unless you have insurance then you can do it twice try not to okay also try to eat for feline foodie so you get to keep your food buffs after you die which is an amazing help anyway the weapon we're going to be using is the safi aqua shot the awakens you need are one nargakuga essence one recoil suppressor one pierce capacity three and two attack fives and the mods are two recoil suppressors one power barrel and one close range up the armor is a mix between nargakuga and furious rajang so as a whole this would give you max crit eye level five agitator and maximum might max free element health boost crit boost piercing shots two levels of stamina surge which is actually nice because we need to be at full stamina for max might one level of peak and fortify and mind's eye with this we have 100 percent affinity on all body parts which is what makes pierce ammo so nice we also have mind's eye so the critical range of pierce threes is shorter and that way we can catch in on more damage and close range up the only problem i have with this set is that it has slow reload so you need to be mindful of your reloads and there's really nothing we can do to mitigate this without losing vast amounts of damage so you just have to consider your reloads very carefully and consider your positioning and timing for when you're doing this kind of like how when regular rajang a lbg was the best for stickies uh but you could only have slow reload this is basically the same thing so <laughs> Keep that in mind. And now finally, we have Heavy Bow Gun. This is basically the same thing as Light Bow Gun, Pierce 3, Nova Death Guaranteed. It's a lot more comfortable uh, in Bowgun standards, in my opinion. For this, we're going to be using Safi's Snipe Cannon. You'll need to awaken it for a Recoil Suppressor, Pierce Capacity 3, Nargakuga Essence, and two Attack 5s. And the mods you'll need are a Power Barrel, a Scope, and then you can go for whatever you want in the last three slots. Uh, shield mods, long range up, close range up, it's all up to you. Just try it out for a couple runs and see which mods you prefer. Now there's actually two ways you could play this setup. One with ammo up and one without. With max ammo up, you'll have eight shots instead of six. So obviously without it, you'll do more damage per shot, but with two extra shots in the clip, you have more opportunities for a true spare shot to proc before you reload. So there's a higher chance for longer damage chains, which would increase your overall DPS. So I think it's up to you. Just try to remember and eat for feline foodies so you get to keep your food buffs after you die and try not to die to anything else but the nova other than that should be pretty comfortable kills since you have recoil plus one and fast reloads or normal reloads i think well guys that's it the best anti elatrion builds for every weapon in the game it was a lot of work but if you enjoyed this video or found it useful then please leave a like as it really does help me out and if you like this kind of video then be sure to subscribe to my channel i want to thank my patrons for their continued support and a special shout out to tasty tacos for being such a supportive guy and i want to thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.